imagine if the loves in your life had the names Elvis, Bruce Jenner, and David Foster. You'd have a lot of interesting things to say, and Linda Thompson sure does in her heartfelt new memoir. I joined Linda at her home in Malibu where she opened up about possibly being the very first person to learn the secret that Jenner was hiding three decades before the world would be told. Call me Caitlin. My world collapsed when Bruce came to me one day and said that he identified as female. So it was, you know, 30 years ago, it was very difficult to comprehend. Their two sons, Brandon and Brody, were very young when Caitlin opened her heart to Linda. Back in the 80s, Linda says she was naive about transgender issues. E.T. visited the then married couple at their home in 1982. She's my best friend. Uh, she's my lover. And we do practically everything together. That's absolutely true. I mean, and you look at that, and people say, well, weren't there any signs? No. Did you know? No. <laughs> Would you have looked at that remarkable man and have any idea? No. When was the first time that you saw her as a woman? I was invited by my then husband <laughs> to come to New York to be with him uh, on a weekend trip. And I thought, okay, maybe we can get past this, put everything aside and we can move on. And when I knocked on the hotel door, she opened the door as Caitlin, as we now know her, you know, full makeup and fully dressed as a woman. How did you react? What happened? I crumbled. I just think I fell down in the hall <laughs> of the hotel. I crumbled and um, she was very apologetic. She said, I'm very sorry, but I just think you need to, to see who I truly am. In her book, A Little Thing Called Life, she reveals their marriage came to an end about six months after Caitlin's revelation. But then Caitlin goes on to marry Chris. When that happened, what went through your mind? I was thrilled. I you was thrilled. so delighted, and I was. And again, in my naivete and ignorance, I didn't know that she was still repressing who she was. I was thinking maybe he has found a way to repress this further and to move on with his life and to find a, a partner and a new life. I was thrilled. Today, she and Caitlin are grandparents to their son Brandon's one-year-old daughter, Eva. And looking back, she accepts how life has played out. I'm so grateful that, that she didn't tell me because I wouldn't have married her and I wouldn't have had the two most two wonderful, wonderful gifts of my life, Brandon and Brody. Linda also has the gift of writing. She is an Oscar-nominated songwriter and has co-written hits for stars like Celine, Barbara, and this Whitney classic. I have nothing, nothing, nothing. I feel like I have experienced so much. It's been fascinating to, to use that as a resource for some of my writing. In the 70s, Linda had a passionate relationship with Elvis Presley, whom she says was actually a quiet, shy man and now single after her divorce from second husband music producer David Foster. Linda's life revolves around her family. How often do you see Caitlin? I don't see Caitlin that often, but when I do, it's very cordial. I'm always delighted to see her. And we get together on family occasions, you know, like um, Eva's first birthday. What do your boys call Caitlin now? Dad. They do? Yeah, the boys call, they call her dad. Caitlin dad. Sure. She is their dad. And Linda said it was actually her son she wrote the book for to chronicle her history for them because she knows at some point in the future they may have more questions than they do today.